All right, we are back for the final chapter in our vocal mixing series. If you have watched all the way from the vocal recording series, you would have watched me pretty much record all of these verses or these vocal takes from scratch, um, you know, level everything and then start the mix in the vocal mixing course. So if you've been here since the beginning, shout out to you. This um, chapter will be on YouTube. So what's up, YouTube? Um, we're going to be doing a nice summary on, um, you know, what we've done. Uh, so yeah, the last time you saw me, uh, I had pretty much done about 70% of the mix. I've now just touched up the track. I did need a little bit of time just to uh, kind of arrange things. Um, I don't know if I had colored everything in since the last time we, we you watched. But um, yeah, things are sounding good. I'll play the track once through and then we will pretty much break down what I've added on and then pretty much recap everything that we've done for those on YouTube. So let's get into it. Oh, I'm on headphones, so let's do that. Came back like I never left. Came back like I never left. I can't really stress. Smoke cush pack, baby girl. I smoke on the best. Working every night, they don't know the half, yeah. Yeah. Dumbing through these hunters, dumbing through these racks, yeah. Yeah. We can never stop. These boys fell off, fell off, yeah. Shooter got a drum, knock your head off, head off, yeah. We can never stop. These boys fell off, fell off, yeah. Shooter got a drum, knock your head off, head off, yeah. Heard they tryna backstab me, well okay. Keep a circle small, keep it real, okay Gotta keep it real, gotta keep it real Just another day, it's so easy to me No, it's gonna be easy to me I got a bankroll, shooters doing what I Alright, cool, so there you go We've pretty much done what we needed to do To get this track up to scratch Something that I would personally want to put out Um just get back on the speakers and uh yeah man things sound good so what did i actually change right this is for the guys on the course um i added this eq okay this is a, a preset that i actually add to vocal buses once in a while and really all it is is just a high pass filter okay that just cleans up some of the dirt it cleans up everything on on on, on the vocal chains on the on the backgrounds right because it's on the vocal bus and then i added this nice little lift here um you know once in a while i will go for a shelving lift but, you know, mostly just a bell style uh, lift is going to be really nice. And that just cleans up the track a little bit, cleans up all of the vocals, makes it sound good. I did turn off the tape plugin because I didn't like how dark the vocal became. I think I wanted it a bit more bright. And then I did mess around a tiny little, a tiny little bit with the SSL EQ. I really just added a bit more of a reduction on 200 hertz. Kept that boost that we added in earlier on today. And um, yeah, things sound good, man. I'm pretty happy with the result. We have also added our mastering limiter onto the track. This again is just a it's just a stock standard limiter. Um, I generally mix to a low latency limiter just so we're not stressing the CPU of our computer. And then I'll add this towards the end of the mix when I'm ready to kind of beef it up. Um, so those who want to hear the difference, uh, we were mixing with this song. Came back like I never left. Came back like I never left. I can't really stress. Smoke cush pack, baby girl. I smoke on a best. Working every night, they don't know the half yeah. That sounds cool. Sounds nice and natural. But when it's time to really beef the track up then you know it'll sound more like this came back like i never left came back like i never left i can't really stress smoke cush pack baby girl i smoke on a best working every night they don't know the half yeah yeah dumbing through these hunters dumbing through these racks yeah now, the reason i decided to keep it at around minus 10 lufs is because remember i'm going to youtube right for you who want to go to spotify title you're going to be aiming for minus eight okay that's why we don't have crazy mastering on i'll have to do mastering in a different course simply because i believe analog mastering will give you a better of an understanding there's no reason for me to just pointlessly add plugins i need to kind of do my full on uh, analog workflow to really show you mastering so we'll leave that for a different um you know time but that's really all i'm doing right it's just lifting up the track in volume so that it can go online and, and be a little bit competitive but not overly loud to the point where we you know pointlessly crushing things right so that's really all we've actually added and and changed I might have, you know, changed a bit of levels here and there. Oh, yeah, actually, we did add a little bit of compression on the background vocals. Um, they were popping out quite a bit. So, for example, if you listen here, um, we actually added a compressor on two, two different sections. So, over here and here, these two, these doublers and then the background vocals. I'll just turn off both of them and then I'll turn them back on so you can hear the difference. I felt that the backgrounds were popping out a little bit too much. Off, yeah. We can never stop. These boys fell off, fell off, yeah. Shooter got a drum, knock your head off, head off, yeah. So that's without the compression and it sounds cool it sounds dynamic but it kind of doesn't fit the overall track right if i had made the track myself maybe i would have done that but for you know we want to kind of stick with the theme of the track off, yeah. we can never stop these boys fell off fell off yeah shooter got a drum knock your head off head off yeah 
And all I really did was I, I wanted a really fast attack so that I could clamp down on the, both of those left and right background vocals while we're compressing these. And then I pulled the threshold down just to the point where we're really just sucking up the whole thing. Um, I'm in opto mode, meaning I'm in like LA-2A mode. So I'm really just thinking of a nice LA-2A just gluing that whole um, kind of background vocal bus. You know what I mean? Really nice. Fat. Um, again on the doubler pretty much the same thing except I really increased the release so that um, you know it just kind of sounded more glued up so if we actually solo this so you can see how we're really just clamping it down make sure that making sure that it stays in one kind of zone um, you know together it sounds beautiful it's not overpowering the main vocal. Remember, our main vocal is everything, okay? Um, but yeah, man, it's been lots of fun, um, you know, running the session for you guys and girls. Hopefully you have learned something. Uh, we will recap everything, you know, so everyone on YouTube again can see what we've done. I'll start off with the main vocal since that's the money. All right, uh, auto-tune, right? You saw me recording through this. You saw me set it up. Really basic, bare bones, right? Don't need to say too much about it. I just like my retune speed fast. We talked about pitch correction in um, the mixing course as well. You know, we went through every type of plugin, so I'm not going to go through that. Um, remember, vocal levels, okay? I'm like your head off, head off, yeah. We can never stop the we want to record and monitor our vocals between ideally zero VU right there and then between minus 10 VU. So this is really our zone, um, our sweet spot when it comes to vocal mixing and vocal recording. Uh, we want to have that uh, around there so that all of our plugins can kind of ingest um, those, those levels nicely, right? And we don't run into any headroom errors later on. So beautiful stuff. Um, you know, from the main vocal chain, we then went into our, we actually remember we mixed this in last. You saw me add this in last. It's always the secret sauce. Not doing too much again. A little bit of tube drive just to add some kind of sparkle to the vocal mix. A little bit of D mud just to get rid of some of that 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 muddiness. Toning down the treble just to get that pull tech sound, um, and just toning down the level. Not much really going on, right? We added that in last, so just keep that in mind. Um, remember, we added the kind of stereo effect, right? Just a little bit of delay, just to spread the vocal a little bit. Nothing crazy, right? These were the settings we used. Right clicked, and then we pressed these four steps just to give us that kind of quarter note delay. Okay. We added in this compressor. Whoops. We added in this compressor. We went through many different compressors, right? Uh, we went through the H comp. We went through the R Vox. We tried all sorts of different compressors in different places in the vocal chain and ended up putting it before the EQ uh, simply because we didn't really want to compress, right? We just wanted that sound, okay? A really nice analog style compressor is going to is always going to give you that kind of rolling off of the top end that warmth that kind of you know aggression that you want um you know when you when you find the right compressor it's almost as if you found three plugins in one you found a saturation plugin you found that glue compression that's going on um and then you found a little bit of eq right a little bit of toning so that's why we ended up choosing the e series we even went to all the other 1176s revision a um the anniversary edition we stuck with this one just because it had a sound all right i want you to really train your ear to hear these subtle differences that every plugin you know piece of hardware can kind of have on your vocals so beautiful stuff okay after this remember remember at the beginning this was the first plugin we had on our recording session okay uh for those who have missed out okay i'm gonna solo this i'm gonna turn on the flander now the reason i'm only gonna have these two plugins on is because this is the way that i was monitoring during the recording stage when i had the mic up over here i was just monitoring like this so this is what the vocals sound like if we just kind of go back and you see how nicely balanced the vocals were already. All it needed was a little bit of massaging and manipulation to make it sound good, okay? We don't want to be in the business of recording terrible sounding vocals and then trying to fix them in the mix. That's not what we're doing. We're in the game of enhancement, okay? In the vocal recording course, I told you about the production line. And in the mixing course, I told you about how this is a whole process of production. Recording, mixing, mastering, right? It is a production chain. We want to make sure every step is good and high quality. So that's what our, our that's what our vocals sounded like without. I'll turn these off as well. It's about 60 to 70 percent done, okay? It shouldn't be anything less than that, okay? Your vocals should sound nice and flat so that we can manipulate them with plugins later and really kind of mold them into what we want, okay? So that's all we did. Um, again, remember, as I said, this is my monitoring plugin, so I put a little bit of high pass filter on, nothing too um, in the way. You know, we want to monitor what our vocals sound like in real time. This is a zero latency plugin as well. And I just tucked in, I think during the mix, we tucked a little bit of this 200 range down. As you can see, I was really working on that 200 range um, in the mix. Uh, my vocals tend to have a build up there. Maybe yours are 280. 
300, you never know, right? Maybe a little bit lower if you have a deeper voice than mine. Um, and, you know, a little bit of 3, 3K pop um, and then an 8K boost just to add in a little bit of shimmer air to the vocal, okay? A little bit of compression we monitor with this. I really like the SSL compressor just to monitor with. Beautiful stuff, okay? Now, during the mix, I decided to add another channel strip because I felt like I wanted to just do a little bit more, right? Now, the difference between these two strips, right, they do essentially the same thing, but this one is linear. It is digital, full-on digital, so it isn't adding any sort of abnormalities that the analog world will bring into your mix, right? Um, this has a little bit of a analog emulation, so it's, it's emulating what every channel looks like on a console. There was an actual console um, model, or this model's a console, and this is channel 51 and 52. And it just gives a little bit of analog character, so there's that going for us. We have that going for us, and then we have a little bit of a low-pass filter actually killing off everything above about 17k that's just going to kind of clean up the track you can't really hear it too much those are very high frequencies okay no air boost or in this case because we already did it here we don't want to go overboard on the treble side um, but we did add a little bit of that 600 right i wanted a little bit of 600 just to kind of bring that beef that warmth out of the vocal sound now again i did reduce here so i'm killing that off um, and then we did go for this boost here, man, because I felt like the vocal needed to compete a little bit with that beat. So if I actually turn the CQ off, you can hear. It's cool, it's clean, but just adding this in here just adds a little bit more of a dimension to the sound. Just kind of, uh, just the 1-2%, man. You know, once you train your ears, you can begin to hear these things. A little bit of a volume output. Um, but really not much going on. We turn the dynamics off. So no dynamics because we have compressed. I like this linear digital compression over this kind of analog model compression. Mm, not really my thing. I have real SSL compressors and I like the real thing. I feel digital can't really um, emulate analog, but I do like what SSL did with, with, the, with their digital. You know what I mean? It's just crazy, right? <laughs> their digital model compressors sound better than analog emulated models is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so after that, man, we did a little bit of DSing. Really not much. You saw me work, you saw me add the threshold in. I'm really just kissing parts that are popping out, okay? Nothing more than that. Racks here, ta ta ta. And there, there it is, that's all it's doing. It's not touching anything else, okay? 4.4K was where we worked. Um, I want you to skim through, you know, and, and look what works for your vocals or whatever you have in front of you. Um, again, I did a little bit more EQ. Kind of got a bit weird with, with how much uh, EQ I wanted to do, okay? So I, you saw me kind of do my thing here. And, um, you know, I just kind of reduced a little bit more, man. Just a little bit more. Let me just take this phone away. All right, so when it came to the EQ, I did a little bit more EQ. These types of, of EQ dips and cuts I need to do when I can concentrate. That's why the cameras weren't rolling. Um, and I did a little bit more. Just to Really, the additional EQing is really just to kind of mimic Tekka's vocals in this case. You know, when you get to mix the whole song, which I didn't get to do here... Um, you get to choose what the overall sound is going to be and, and you don't have to really chase something, right? So in this case, ignore these extra EQ filters. They really just help kind of blend things together, right? But again, we, we, we the main idea was to focus in on what we didn't like, right? And remember, I was talking about this 212 hertz at the beginning of a vocal recording course. Like, I wanted to get rid of some of that. So I cut that away, right? Uh, we cut away some of the air and then I just worked around that. And really, we just picked away at what we didn't like, left everything we liked. Mids must always be in high quality, that way we don't touch them, we don't need to touch them later on, right? Um, done deal. Um, oh yeah, tape plugin we, we had off, so we turned this off, don't need it. Um, you know, and then we have our two flanger plugins. Now what I did actually change with this um, plugin was I actually changed the flanger, I didn't like it. And what I did do was I actually turned this into 100% and then just turned the, the, the wet and dry on over here. I think it sounds a little bit better in this instance, um, but really not much going on. And it just adds a little bit of a width, right? Again here, this is just adding a little bit of a width into the vocal. So listen to racks here and here once these plugins are on. It just adds a little bit of a kind of uh, little smoothing effect onto our vocals. So beautiful stuff, man. That is our main vocal chain. Again, our vocal bus. We are doing my preset EQ, which I like to add at the end of a mix sometimes if I feel I still have a little bit of tubbiness, just to clean up everything at once, a little bit of air boost. And then as you know, I monitor with these plugins on. So if I'm recording, I've got these on just so I know that I'm in the right ballpark. Generally, if I see one to, one to two dB of compression, I know that my gain staging is good. Just a little kiss, okay? And then again, I never change this. Um, you can go more aggressive for those who like a more squashed vocal sound. You can do that. Uh, for example, if I was just to do this real quick, um, this is something I actually did try. That's what I'm going to show you. 
Sometimes you can actually get away with doubling up your limiting. So for example, one you squash, the other one you keep as is, but check this out. Coming through these hunters, coming through these ranks, yeah. Yeah, we can never stop. These boys fell off, fell off, yeah. Shoot, I got a drum, knock your head off, head off, yeah. So you can see how I'm kind of over compressing the vocal sound. Coming through these hunters, coming through these ranks, yeah. Yeah, we can never stop. These boys fell off, fell off, yeah. Shoot, I got a drum, knock your head off, head off, yeah. Some rap songs actually sound really beautiful with that. I'll give you guys that tip as well. Uh, certain songs, you're going to want that over-limited sound, okay? But for this one, more natural, really cool. Um, so yeah, you know, background vocals. If we just mute the main vocal, what do our backgrounds sound like, right? We'll kind of just overview them. I went over these. We, we You saw me make these, so I'm not really going to focus too much time on these. Everything must just kind of fit behind the main vocal, okay? You saw us work, man. Uh, you know, we're using our modulation to pan from left to right, our LFOs. We're using our delays just to kind of push the backgrounds a bit back. Saturation, right, to get that aggression. Um, bit of flanger, right? Bit of EQ, SSL concert style EQ. You know me, SSL boy. A uh, little bit of tape just to get that kind of smoothness, right? DSing, you saw me heavily DS to make sure that the vocal doesn't pop out, right? Where are our ad libs, right? So, for example, here. Head off, head off, yeah. I mean, it's just so smooth, right? Head off, head off, yeah. Head off, head off, yeah. Beautiful, right? You know, just all sorts of hacks, man, that we went through. Um, you know, a bit of reverb, right? And it just goes on and on and on, right? We've got our, our guitar style effect that we had. Which one was this? The doubler. Um, was it this one? I think so. Right, axe compression. You saw me do this. Uh, guitar style EQ, a little bit of a pitch shift thing going on there just to add a bit of vibe, right? We said that as our crazy channel, right? Every mix should have one crazy channel. I think that was the one. Uh, compression I added in post. Flanger just to, you know, have it pop into the beat. EQ, you get the idea, man. We did all that stuff, right? We had a lot of fun. Um, the backgrounds, again, I'll solo those out just so we can hear what they sound like. Uh, finalized, right? I think they sound pretty good. We can never stop. These boys fell off, fell off, yeah. Shoot, I got a drum. Knock your head off, head off, yeah. And again, we want flat recordings so that we can manipulate them like that, right? If I turn off all of those plugins. We can never stop. These boys fell off, fell off, yeah. Shoot, I got a drum. Knock your head off, head off, yeah. You know, that sounds nice, man, but we can manipulate, you know? We can never stop. These boys fell off, fell off, yeah. Shoot, I got a drum. Knock your head off, head off, yeah. Right? Good days, man. Happy stuff. So, yeah, man, there you go. That's really, you know, what we, we've done in this mix, man. It's, it's simple, it's sweet, but it is very effective, man, if we can learn to mix in that way. Um, I did also add in the delays. Did you watch me add in the delays? You did. So we've covered that. Um, You know, we've got our effects that we recorded in real time. You watched me do that. Right, we even recorded an H3000 and then put our F3000 emulation on there. I mean, isn't that like an inception, right? Uh, <laughs> really cool, man. So we had a lot of fun um, mixing. And, uh, you know, we did our H3000. Our Effectron flanges and all of those together just add on to the track. I did actually, one thing I will show you is I did find I wanted a bit more treble. And so what I did was I created another send. I'll actually show you that now. And it's something that I have on. It was called Flanger earlier, but since it's a it's an air boost now, uh, it is what it is. So I, I added a little bit of distortion, and then I added in a little bit of EQ, and then I tweaked the EQ up to the point where I wanted, uh, or to the point that I wanted to emphasize. Right. So if I actually turn this off. Baby girl, I smoke on a best. Working every night, they don't know the half. Yeah. Get dumbing through these hunters, dumbing through these racks. Yeah. Yeah. We can never stop these boys. And that's just adding a little bit of a dimension to the treble range of the track, just kind of compressing it uh, via distortion. So cool stuff, simple and sweet. Reverbs, we didn't even touch really in this mix. I might have boosted this a little bit. Delays, um, you know, you saw me add this flanger in. Um, but really, that's it, you know, not much more. This is how I do it. All the, all, every single mix, I'll, I'll treat it the same, right? Once you've found, figured out your workflow and figured out the plugins that you like, you can really learn to manipulate them in ways that are going to be to your benefit. So, yeah, man, hopefully you have enjoyed watching this course. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video if you're on YouTube right now. If you watched again from the beginning, vocal recording course, watch me record 
um, you know, compile everything. I freestyle this, you know what I mean? You watch me freestyle this, right? Uh, we mix the track, right? I did a little bit of editing on my own. Um, but all of that together, we end up with a nice result. So, you know, definitely check out the links below if you're watching this on YouTube for that vocal recording course. It is the newest one that'll be out soon. Hopefully it'll be out by the time you watch this video. Check out the vocal mixing course where you see me mix this track. And um, definitely make sure to smash that like button. Check out the links below as well for the F3000 plugin, right? We got the F3000, we got the vocal enhancer, all for FL Studio. These are native to FL Studio using uh, FL Studio's patcher, right? Um, and yeah, man, hopefully you stay well. Hopefully you keep mixing every day, stay motivated and do this as much as you can, right? It's all I've done every day for the last nine years and it pays off. Um, yeah, man, have a good week or weekend. I'll check you out next time. Peace out.